You were 24 and you were made the head of a division yes. for Mercedes Benz Nigeria. Yes. Wow. Okay. Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah, I was the youngest. Mm -hmm. The others were in their thirties. Of Other course. Head of division. Of course. In their 30s, you know. You know. So it was. It was a very, very, uh, very important step in my life. Actually. Wow. Wow. So, so how old are you now? I'm 32 now. You're 32 now. Yes. What did you do study in school? Soil science and farm mechanization. You need to repeat that one time so the camera, <laughs> so the camera can hear. Soil, Soil science. science. Soil and science. Farm mechanization. Farm mechanization. Okay, so do you assemble or do you make these vehicles in Nigeria? So that question is a very interesting question. Yeah? You, you need to assemble to make. In, in automobile, I don't know about me, I think, I think a, a lot of component engineering. Yeah? Phones, laptops, electronics cars you have to assemble okay the process of assembling is what is called making nigeria turned 60 on the 1st of october 2020 this means our country is now an adult however it is the u2 have continually made the nation proud despite tough circumstances one of such youths is tobi ajayi the ceo of nord automobile limited who at 33 years of age decided to establish a company that makes affordable Nigerian vehicles. This is his story. Enjoy. A couple of days ago, I was just chilling on Twitter and I came across a picture of a vehicle. And this vehicle looked really, really nice, looked distinct. And some, somebody, was, somebody said the vehicle looked very cute, which, which, which struck me as funny. But I asked around and I found out that that vehicle was made in Nigeria. When I'm saying vehicle, you might be thinking uh, something. No, it was a fuel pickup truck that was made in Nigeria. Now, this is not the first that has been made in Nigeria, but this one, something different and interesting uh, about, about it. So I asked around and I found the person, the lead magician of the company that makes this vehicle. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm speaking to Mr. Tobi Ajayi, the CEO of Nord Automobiles. Thank you very much. Thank you, me. thank you very much for speaking with us, man. Thank you. Well, because I feel like I'm speaking to somebody who, who knows what he's doing. Who knows what he's doing. Oh, guys, what is my smile? Smile, lady. <laughs> <laughs> Do you understand? Okay, like I said, thank you very much for speaking with me. Yeah, Hearing yeah. all these things you've said now, knowing all the problems and all the stress, wahala, and everything you were going to face, you still decided that this is what you want to dedicate a better part of your life to. Why? Yeah. Why? Tell, tell me a little bit of your history. Okay, so I, 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 I've always wanted to be impactful. Okay. I've always wanted to be somebody that 200 years from now, I would be remembered. I've always said this since I was a teenager. But you could, you could do, sorry I'm cutting, but you could do that in other ways now. It doesn't have to be this. Yeah, okay, so, yes. I, I wanted, actually, when I, when, I, when I finished university, uh -huh. I wanted to be a farmer. Same reason because I wanted to be impactful. Okay. I wanted to feed people. I wanted. I had a dream that I'll have a farm, and when I walk, walk into my farm, I'll, I'll the, the produce of my farm will be able to feed millions of people. Uh -huh. I've just wanted. Had, it's not so. Yes, I like. I like the money. You mm -hmm. make the money, but what really drives me is that impact. Okay. The fact that you are changing lives, you are adding value to people. That's what really. Of course, there's no way you are going to. Be valuable. You're mm -hmm. going to add value. You won't make money. It's not, it's, it's, that's just the way the capitalist world is. Okay. You will make money, but what really drives me is that value. Mm -hmm. How to how to be impactful. How to change things. How to make people better. How to make people's lives better. So I've always wanted to, you know, be in the farm. You know, you know, uh, cultivate maize, mm -hmm. cultivate cassava, ensure that people do not go hungry. Go bring hungry. bring down the price of food so people can afford it. People can. So that's, that's always, that was my dream mm -hmm. uh, until at the NYSC and I came to Mercedes-Benz Nigeria. Oh, you served in Mercedes-Benz Mercedes Nigeria. How does one begin to serve in, let's not tell people, how does one begin to serve in Mercedes-Benz? <laughs> See this? No, 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 funny enough, people, I read it online, people saying that maybe I'm connected or something, no. no. So you are not connected? Maybe then, I, maybe now, yeah. I know a couple of people because I've worked hard uh, yeah, to get to that point. Yeah, yeah. But at that time, I knew nobody. So you just... You just I should tell you, they're still there. I worked in there. Mm. And and um, then you could, you know, ask to go and look, look for a PPA. I worked in there mm -hmm. and I 
and I asked that I would like to serve. And at that time, they don't, they were not taking coppers. This message is Nigeria. Mm. They were not. It's a long story. I'm trying to uh, just summarize it. Story. I was okay. going somewhere else actually. Yeah. I was going somewhere else. I was a copper here in, in Lekki. Mm -hmm. I was going somewhere. Someone sent me somewhere. So I was I was checking mm. because the amount to enter bus from where I was to where I was going to was 15 naira. Mm -hmm. I felt that that 15 naira, if I instead trek it, mm. that 15 naira has a lot of value at that time. At that time. A lot of, okay. you know, night food, all those things. <laughs> so I felt, let me just trek this okay. thing. So on my, I, I don't want to mention too, you know, on, mm -hmm. on my way to that company, mm -hmm. I saw Mercedes Benz on my, on my right. I was trekking along the Kati Road. Mm -hmm. I said, I was wearing my khaki. And I said, I not try this mm -hmm. piece now. So I walked in there. I've not, I've not really said this. Before. I've only okay. told a couple of my friends. Okay. This is the first time I'll say this in an interview. Okay. So I walked in there, and as luck would have it, it was during break. Okay. So the receptionist, who would have just sent me away mm -hmm. if I got there any other time, was not on seat. So the PA to the MD was sitting for her. Okay. Her name is Feta Jai. Okay. I'm Tobi Jai. Oh, okay. So you I guys were related? No, no. No, I just didn't know her. you didn't know. <laughs> so state of Suwa, oh, yeah, okay. Komogu. So I walked in there and I introduced myself like I always do then mm. to now. I introduced my my name in full, like you know, my name is Tobi Jai. Hello, Tobi Jai. I'm very. She, she smiled. I was wondering why she. Why is she smiling? Okay. Me, why is she, you know. So um. Hello, I'd like to serve like here. Uh, she, I'm looking for a PPA, I'd like to serve here. And she was like, well, we actually didn't take coppers. Mm -hmm. uh, but let me see what I can do. Do you have a CD here? I had a CD, it was folded four times. <laughs> and, like, <laughs> okay. So I opened the khaki. You okay. know why I see khaki mm -hmm, now? Mm -hmm. I opened it, brought it out, looked at the CD. A bit, like only surprised and disappointed with that. So she looked at it, looked at the CV, and she went in. Then she came back out and said, um, okay, are you ready for a test now? And I was like, oh, okay, let's see. And I did the test right there and then, then. like immediately. Okay. I did the test and I think I passed. Okay. Very well, actually. Very, very well. Okay. I passed the, my test results was very good. Mm -hmm. And they were a bit surprised, you know. So the GM called me that day. This is mm -hmm. my khaki, the GM of Mrs. Ben Nigeria. She's, she's Romanian. She called me and said, I saw your test result. It was very good. Mm -hmm. Are you sure you are just a copper? And I'm <laughs> like, Madam, copper went to school. Mm -hmm. We just a step below. Yeah. So okay, what I realized was that a day before, the did it did it uh, an interview and test for mm -hmm. some people and some of them didn't, didn't pass, so, okay. so they were confused should they do another batch or whatever what should they do mm -hmm. then i came in and i scored very high higher than most people that most did. of those people okay most of the, you know people that finished serving that or even did a uh, masters mm -hmm. you know and the rest so they were very happy and she said okay uh, i did very well in the test and i should come for another interview anyway three four interviews after I was taken as a copper. I was the first. I was, and I wasn't. I wasn't paid. I wasn't because they don't take take coppers. So I wasn't being paid. I was paid an allowance, transport allowance. That's what allowance, okay? You know, so, so you're, you're not collecting it. the salary. You were just yeah, giving. I took it and I was working hard. I was mm. working very hard. In fact, I started attending sales managers meeting while I was a copper. Mm. Actually, how hard I was. I was work, but my. When I was in Mercedes Benz Nigeria, my name was Onisha. Like <laughs> super the MD was calling me Super, super to be. Oh, okay. And my mates, my friends, they were calling me Onisha. Mm. So I was the work as in back to back. Okay. You know. So of course, after NYS, I was retained. Mm. And after I got retained, uh, they made me. Uh, they gave. They made me in charge of um, the van division. Okay. In Nigeria, that was some. Uh, some months or less than a year after. After, so you after came in, you came in, let's say you came in in January, by September, you had, they had retained you. Yes, and October they retained me. By October they had retained you and you had been made in charge of one. No, 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 no. 
so they re they retain me. You just a staff. Just okay. There. No, you know, just mm -hmm. normal staff. Normal staff. Okay. Some uh, yeah. Then months after, they put me in charge of the van division. How long did it take? From retention. Yeah, from when you were retained. About three months. About three months. They made you. In, they put you in charge of a van division. Yes. Okay. Okay. So and that was the beginning of great things. Okay. That's the that's the beginning. That's how everything. This whole yeah, journey to where that, we are today. That, that position gave me a lot of things. Being the head of a division just came with a lot of perks. Okay. So I was able to meet a lot of Wizu. I was able to attend meetings with the MD. Mm -hmm. You know because. He's head of division, I was able to learn from him. Mm -hmm. He's the MD of Nigeria is very brilliant. Mm -hmm. yeah. I was able to learn a lot of things from him. I was able to, you know, grow very fast. Mm. And I became a leader overnight. Overnight. And you know, can I ask how old you were at this time? I was 24. Yes. You were 24 and you were made the head of a division yes. for Mercedes Benz Nigeria. Yes. Wow. Okay. Yes. And um, so, so, and the, the pressure was much. Of course, they, they, they trained me, you know, they, they tried to, okay, okay, do it this way, this way, this way. Mm -hmm. I was the youngest. Mm -hmm. The others were in their thirties. Of course. Other head of division of were course. in their thirties, you know. You know. So it was, it was a very, very, uh, very important step in my life, actually. Okay. So after that, uh, at, when I was like 25, so okay, let me, let me, let me, let me go a little bit into, so, when I became head of Vans mm -hmm. in Nigeria, the Van division wasn't doing too well. Mm -hmm. And I think that's why they just put a young boy there. Okay. Because, okay, just hold it, you know, it wasn't doing too well mm -hmm. because Nigerians were not really buying Vans. Mm -hmm. They were buying Mercedes Vans, they were buying more from other the companies other, yeah, yeah. and the rest. So at that point, I wanted to prove to them that they made the right decision. Okay. I wanted to show that I, I, I'm, I, I may be young, mm -hmm. but I would show you that you made the right decision in mm -hmm. putting me in charge of this division. So I came up with a lot of strategies. Showed the MD, of course, some were very, you know, very, you say, no, no, not mm -hmm. this, you know. So at the, at the point, I approved some of them, mm -hmm. brought some vehicles in, and we started selling to transporters. Mm -hmm. We increased our, our market share in the van segment from zero, from less than one to like seven eight percent wow within two years within two years yeah so by then you were 26 or 27. i was 20 like yeah about 26 yeah 26. 26. okay so so after that because and we didn't really have a dedicated van van dealership mm -hmm. then so i spoke to them like, oh let us get a, a van mm -hmm, mm -hmm. a van uh, dealership and i actually i started looking for somebody that mm -hmm. would be a van dealer of mm -hmm. the city's van as I, in point of looking for, I, I met some people who said, okay, no, well, let us do this together. Instead of looking for, mm -hmm. we'll give you the So you did, you did partnerships yeah, and everything, exactly. everything. Let's okay. together and do this thing, of course. And that was how... Uh, That's how everything... Jetvan. So, I now, so we now formed a company called Jetvan. Jetvan. Okay. So Jetvan started, I resigned from Mercedes-Benz Nigeria, became the CEO of Jetvan, okay. which is a dealer of Mercedes-Benz. Okay. Vans. Okay. You know, then that, I was 26 then. At 26, I, I became the CEO mm -hmm. of an authorized dealer of Mercedes Benz. Okay. Wow. Yeah. Wow. This this thing sounds like the script from a movie. Wow. wow. So so how old are you now? I'm 32 now. You're 32 now. Yes. What did you do study in school? Soil science and comic organization. You need to repeat that one time for the <laughs> camera. So the camera can hear. Soil, Soil science. science. Soil and science. Farm mechanization. Farm mechanization. Okay. So from when you got into mercedes benz and you became you resigned and became a ceo of jet van yeah. and everything all this happened in less than six six years till now right yes okay no till now eight years eight years yeah. so eight years and you were operating as the youngest yeah. youngest head of division in the history of the company in nigeria yes at that time at that time okay so then what made you decide that you wanted to make your own so your own? okay so when i was in jet van jet van like i said dealer of, an authorized dealer of mercedes benz mm -hmm. We're selling the Mercedes Benz vans, mm -hmm. and um, um, so the, the the dollar was dollar to the naira mm -hmm. was really against the naira. Okay, you know it was very expensive, you know, to to mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. get you know the foreign exchange was not so good then. Mm -hmm. So I, I used to travel, travel for business trips. Mm -hmm. So one of our travels to Asia. Just thought that okay, you know what? Um, 
since the customers are beginning to complain, are beginning to complain about the cost, the cost mm -hmm. of all these things. Even though, of course, they agree that the quality of Mercedes Benz is high, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you know, but they were beginning to complain about the cost. Okay. You know, so I said, okay, now let me look for a solution for these guys. Let me let me create something that is as good, mm -hmm. maybe not as luxurious, but as good, and also for a very affordable price. Okay. You know, so and that was how the idea. Or not no, came about. About. Okay. So, but one question that is on everybody's mind is, you're young, you're a young man and everything, how did you get the financial power to put all this together? Are you in partnership with anybody or do you own a company outrightly or you have investors or something? How did this money come to do, to do this? Okay, um, I own a super majority of Mod. Okay. So, I'm the owner of the company, mm -hmm. but of course, nobody does anything great alone. Mm. So, I have people, I have... Uh, Technical partners, I have financial partners, I have investors around me, but like I said, I own majority of the company. Okay. You know, so um, so it wasn't. So first of all, when I left Mercedes Benz, mm -hmm. when I left uh, Jetman, I I had some money on me, so I used it in the beginning to do a lot of R and D. Mm -hmm. You know, I had family and friends, bring money in, you know, okay, sent it to China, mm -hmm. sent it to Germany for R&D, mm -hmm. test results, you know, um, ask for favors, okay, help me test this thing mm -hmm. now, help mm -hmm. me, okay, help me test, you know, do this for me, mm -hmm. okay, get this to, you know, so, of course, and at a, at a, I bought a lot of money. Mm. You of know, your own personal, own personal money. okay. And the company was almost going down. In fact, I was going to Abekota to start farming in 20, 2019. Okay. You know? So what changed? Then, then I met I met a friend of mine in Lagos Business School. Mm -hmm. Introduced me to some people mm -hmm. who took a, a, a part of the company. Okay. And pump, because they they seen what I've done mm -hmm. at that time. We even had vehicles in the country too. Mm -hmm. They seen what I've gone. What I you know. Like, ah, okay. Let's not let's. Let's take it to the next level, which is the story of most great companies. Mm -hmm. The founder would, you know, do a lot with his own money, do a lot. Companies almost dying, and somebody is, somebody will come from somewhere and, and help and help because mm -hmm. they've seen what you've done. They've so seen, they, they had seen yeah, the seen, efforts and everything. Yeah, at okay. that time we had a lot of things already. We had mm -hmm. our, we had our, we had a lot of license already. Mm -hmm. We had trademark. We had uh, safety certification. Okay. Not only in Nigeria, in Europe, okay. in Asia. In our name, so they already seen how much work has done it. Mm -hmm. So it was easy for them to bring in their money and say, "Okay, you know what? Let's, let's take it commercial." Okay. And because at that point, I wasn't commercial; I was doing testing, mm. which to me it's very important. Which is why I feel that you are going to think a lot of, a lot of people are going to think that we just came yesterday, mm. but we've done all the homework all for the, the homework. last four, five. So it's years. not just like a, it's not like magic yeah, at all. It, a lot of work. Start okay. This. Anybody that wants to start this is about three years. Way. <laughs> okay. There's no way, except you're mm -hmm. going to produce vehicles that will disintegrate on the road. On the road, okay. You know, you because you need to do tests. Mm. You need to collaborate with people. You need to get. You need to do a lot of things. It's not. It's not that easy. It's not that easy. It's, it's not, not that, that easy. easy you know? okay. So, so at that time we've done it. They came in. They saw what we've done and they said, okay. Uh, so the, at that time I owned it. I'll try it. I'll try yeah. it. You know, I had a friend who just held me back. Mm -hmm. You know, they came in. Okay, they took a part, not okay. so much, a part of the company and. Mm -hmm. Of course, the company has been flying, has been flying, has been flying since then. Yes. Okay, so I want you to put this in the simplest terms now. Do you assemble or do you make these vehicles in Nigeria? So, that question is a very interesting question. Yeah. And it's, it, it's, it's very, it's, like I said, it's very interesting people ask. Mm -hmm. Now, they're both correct. Okay. Assemble, make. They're both correct. It's, it's, it's semantics. Okay. Do you cook jollof rice or do okay. you make jollof rice? Okay. Do you cook jollof rice or do you make jollof rice? It depends on the language you're speaking. Do you <laughs> sew your clothes or okay. do you make clothes? You make your clothes, okay. So if oh. you ask me now, yeah. I sewed this one from, but there's a tailor who made the clothes. Exactly. It's, okay. it's so, you you need to assemble to make. In in automobile, I don't know I think I think a, a, a lot part of Component engineering. Yeah. Phones, laptops, electronics, cars, you have to assemble. Okay. The process of assembling is what is called making. 
just like when you are cooking, the process of cooking is what is called making the food. Mm -hmm. The process of baking cake, putting the ingredients together, together okay. is what is making the cake. Okay. You know, so the process of assembling the vehicles is that is when you're making the vehicle. So it's 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 almost it's it's it's, it's like call it a synonym. Mm -hmm. Do you get? So like your clothes you're wearing now, the tailor will bring the material. Mm -hmm. From somewhere, bring the button from somewhere, bring the, the line tread from and somewhere, everything. The tread from tread from somewhere. Then he goes and sews those mm -hmm. things together, and he puts his label on it, mm -hmm. and he makes it. It, it, it. That's the same thing. We bring components from different parts of the world, and we assemble them here, mm -hmm. and it is it qualifies as being made, made because it. that making assembling is to make made, to make okay. to make something. So. From, I like to use the word assembly, for, mm. funny enough, because that's what it is. Okay. You're assembling it. But uh, commercially, qualifies as being made. Being made also. in Nigeria. So your vehicles are made in yeah, Nigeria. Yeah, absolutely. Made in Nigeria. Yes. Okay, thank you very much. See, let me, let me lock the door and see how it sounds. Okay. Hear the sound. It sounds muffled. It sounds like... Yeah. Okay. Why is that? Um... First of all, it's because of the quality of steel. Okay. And the some of the some of the quality the quality. Come and touch this one. Okay. You see, first, can you see? Oh, okay, okay. So all these things mm -hmm. are very high quality to ensure that the sound when mm -hmm. you're opening your door, you feel very good. Even as you open your door, mm -hmm. you know, when you close your door, it sounds. Mm -hmm. Like you don't you don't feel depressed or, you know mm -hmm. you feel very good you know it sounds like something of value <laughs> something okay. of high quality okay you know those little things okay Woo. yeah okay so put on the AC this is really powerful <laughs> so the AC because those are the things that we've done if it, I, I, we, we we ensure that we build this very cool for Nigeria, for okay. the climate of Nigeria. You know, one, of the, one of the advantages of having a made in Nigeria vehicle is that it is built, it is inclusive, that's what I call it. That's why when I'm, when I'm talking to my, my technical guys, mm. my designers, my engineers, I tell them that we have to ensure that these vehicles are inclusive. Okay. But remember inclusive, we include the needs, the wants of our people, okay. how Nigerians want their thing, mm. the way they want their music to sound, the way they want their AC to be, you know, the way they want their seats to be, everything, no more, no, just give them what they want at the price they want it. Okay. Do you get So, so for here, for this one, and it's not so much, we just, we just made sure we put very high capacity compressor. That's okay, it. okay. You know? This is what makes the AC, because it's already yes. cold now. Yeah. It's cold already. Because oh. we know that it's, so, so yeah, when you're inside, you are, the only time you won't like it is when at night, because at night, everywhere will be frozen. <laughs> So you just have to close your vent and okay. you close the vent and you're fine. So you can hear the music, really nice. You can yeah. you can hear so, you can increase it from there. You know, Bluetooth, whatever you want. So they have two airbags. Okay. Airbags. You know, and here. Yeah. Yes. So this is this is carbon fiber. Wow. It's not it's quite pricey. Oh okay. Yeah, and quite luxurious. It's what you see in most top SUVs. Oh okay. Yeah. So and um, you can see you can see the detailing. The, okay. The detailing on, on the yeah. on the upholstery and everything. Yeah, upholstery, very, yeah. You know, top quality. So it's also a four wheel drive. Okay. You can check four wheel four drive. Four wheel drive. Okay. So all you need when you're in a, when you're in a, in a tight spot, mm -hmm. just press this. All four, all four wheels. Then you control four. and then everything. This four wheel high. This four wheel low. You can park parking sensors. So you, you have so you have so first of all you have the reverse camera. So mm -hmm. depress your brake. And engage the diff so you can okay. Yeah, and, and see okay. The camera, you see. Okay. This is the pickup. Wow. The pickup. And it has its own. Yes. yes. Okay. See. Even if you move a yeah, little so bit, it can show you. So if you if you go too close, so you can take it back to, to P. So if you go, to, if you're trying to park, uh -huh. if you go too close to a human being or something, if you, if you go to the front now, uh -huh. you'll hear the beep. So, so basically, you're saying this vehicle or this tank or this pickup truck yeah. can tell you when there's an object close to you so when you, you are park parking. Well, yes. You park well. So you don't hit people or you don't. You don't hit any vehicle. Yes. And all this was made in Nigeria. Yes. Made Everything here. Yeah. Wow. Everything here. Yeah.
Wow. Amazing, amazing. Guys, I just I want to hear these these speakers because that's what is one of the things that's very important to me. Woo! Woo -hoo -hoo -hoo. Wonderful. <laughs> this done by us for us and for the world. For us and for the world. Oh, okay, okay. This this makes sense. Let's look under the hood. Let's look under the hood. Let's see. Okay, so I'm looking at the engine now. And this looks like a lot of instruments. It looks like a lot of components and everything. So if anything spoils, can we find the parts in? Do you understand? From the engine to the brakes to the fuse, electrical fuses to the suspension, to the brakes, you can find everything, even your ladipo. <laughs> in if you need market, in a boot, anyway, you can find it. But of course, we have our own, our own, uh, uh, our own inventory. Yeah. We, we expect, we encourage customers to come to us okay. because you have your warranty three mm. years or 100,000 kilometers, whichever comes first. Which so comes come first. and enjoy your three years warranty. Come to us, service with us, mm. you know, for the power trip. You know, come to us. So basically, don't cut, don't cut yeah, corners. Don't, yeah, don't go, <laughs> don't go to the other. But, <laughs> but if you choose to, mm. if you are stuck on the road, of course, if you are in Ore, mm. you'll find all these parts. All these things. In Ore, okay. Anyway, you can find them anywhere. Mm. That part you can, that's one of the things we talk about. Make, use, making sure that we use parts that are readily available, available in the Nigerian. Nigerian. The only the parts you won't see are the, the, the body parts. Okay. Which are ours, you have to come to us. We even have it here. Okay. But any other parts to get your vehicle moving, mm. like stop on the road, you can find it anywhere. Say your anywhere. brake pad caught, your this one, pad, you, you, you can, can find. find it okay. Okay. This is this is amazing. I'm so you've shown us all these things now, and all this are made in Nigeria. Yeah. Uh, the components are assembled in Nigeria. Yeah. Okay. We assembled all these components in Nigeria, but mm. we got it from different parts of the world. Okay. Just the same way your tailor mm -hmm. got your clothes, your fabric from one country mm -hmm. and got the thread from one country and put it together mm -hmm. to make these clothes for you mm -hmm. or this suit for me. Mm -hmm. You get and with his name, a Nigerian name on it. Yeah. That's the same way we got all these different components, the screws, to the engine from different OEM suppliers all over the world. Okay. They were put together. At, at that time they were just pieces of metal mm. we put them together to make a machine that can move on the road on the road okay you made a nigerian vehicle yes Basically. from components from components all sourced all over the world makes a lot of sense makes a lot of sense and this is gentlemen the north tank makes makes a lot of sense okay so let's amazing amazing and i know you have other you have other um other oh, versions yeah, we, have, we have other models other models about, yes we have about 10 models mm -hmm. In, I just mentioned earlier to you, uh, if you come in a month's time, mm -hmm. now you can see two different, there's another model here. Yeah. If you come in about uh, about four weeks' time, mm -hmm. because we are the factory producing the other ones, mm -hmm. you're going to see three different, three more models, making five models here. Okay. And by January, you're going to see eight different I'm going models. to see more. Yeah, eight more. But in, in just three weeks' time or four weeks' time, you're going to see five models here five models here okay so what do you think is the reason why nigerians prefer i want you to put this as simply as possible mm -hmm. and as short as possible what do you think why do you think nigerians prefer to kumbo cars to new cars brand new cars so um, I, 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 don't, I don't blame nigerians for preferring to kumbo cars yeah it's that there, there, there are two major reasons there are more reasons or major reasons mm -hmm. number one is financial mm -hmm. financial to commercial and number two is is um, social okay financially because an average nigerian cannot afford a brand new car mm. it's just you know and for reasons that's not their fault you know, mm -hmm. it's, you know it, it, it's just out of the reach and mm. one of the major reasons apart from the fact that we don't end too well here in this part of the world yeah our earning power is really low another reason which we're trying to solve, I'm really going to make sure that that problem is out of the way. Yeah. Is that a vehicle that costs 15,000 US dollars mm -hmm. in Japan will cost about 15,500 okay. in the USA. Okay. But that vehicle would cost a Nigerian, the same hardworking Nigerian, mm -hmm. $45,000. Oh, wow. That's God knows. Man, the markup is massive. Yes, why? You know, the cost of shipping, mm -hmm. 
um, tariff, then the huge margin. Mm. You know, because of because the, because we're not doing so much, mm -hmm. we're not doing so much volume. Mm -hmm. Most of the uh, most people who sell brand new vehicles put a very high margin on it, mm -hmm. which I don't blame them also to cover up for the loss of volume, mm -hmm. which they don't have. Mm -hmm. So, but for me, what I want to do is come to the market and make it affordable for Nigerians. Exactly. Reasonably affordable, of course. Okay. Because va it, there, there's, a, there's, there's a corresponding cost to value. Mm -hmm. You know, so make reasonably affordable. So a vehicle that's fifteen thousand dollars or the quality of a vehicle that's fifteen thousand dollars anywhere in the world. Because we're not doing the volume here in Nigeria, mm -hmm. I will try my best to ensure Nigerians can get it for seventeen thousand dollars. Okay. Maybe just significant a little bit. A little bit, bit more up a little, little bit more because of because I, I, I'm not doing the amount, the volume to, okay. to be able to compete with the big the, names. The big names and everything. Okay. But not something like $15,000 to $45,000. <laughs> no, no, no. Okay. Maximum $17,000. And soon, if Nigerians patronize us, mm -hmm. we will be able to give them, because it's a volume business, yeah. we will to give them the same vehicle anybody in the world is buying for $15,000 for $15,000 here. Okay. Now, why people now buy Tukumbo cars is this? A fifty thousand dollars to Fumbo car, like I said, fifty thousand dollars brand new car. Yeah. In America, it's forty five thousand dollars. Yeah, Nigeria. in Nigeria. But fifty thousand dollars to Fumbo car mm -hmm. in America is maybe twenty two thousand dollars. Nigeria. Yeah, Nigeria. Okay. So consciously and unconsciously, mm -hmm. Nigerians have been able to. The market has seen the fact. Maybe it makes more sense. Okay. To buy mm -hmm. it because you can almost see the value. You the know? value and Africa everything. Is, is fifteen thousand dollars mm -hmm. here. Mm -hmm. I have to just add small shipping money and small and, mm -hmm. and it gets it. So that's why. So that's what I'm trying to solve now. That's what we're okay. trying to solve in North. Mm -hmm. To say that, okay, you know what? That bag could have fifteen thousand dollars Instead of you buying for you will buy for the same amount you ordinarily have mm -hmm. a Tokumbo bag. Mm -hmm. So a bag that other from other people are selling for 17 million naira mm -hmm. and the Tokumbo is let's say eight million naira. Yeah. We will sell the same Tokumbo, the same Vehicle that people are selling for 17 million naira for 8 million naira. So, those million. that are going to buy 8 million naira to combo cars can now look and say, okay, you know what? Let me just let me buy this brand new brand vehicle, new which offers you three years warranty. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. More time, more that. time with the vehicle, basically. Exactly, more okay. time. At least four years, you are, you are happy with your vehicle. Mm -hmm. That's, so, that, so, we're going to solve that commercial problem. Mm -hmm. The number two is the social. Okay. It's currently socially acceptable to drive to combo cars. Okay. It's currently socially acceptable. To give to your wife a used <laughs> car. Yeah. Those are things we're trying to change. So if you mm. want to give your car, if you don't give your wife a car, you have to give her a brand new car. A brand new car. You know, so you know you cannot you shouldn't give her a car somebody else has used before. Okay. But I don't blame anybody now because <laughs> that's what the economy is saying. That's what the economy is saying. That's what people can afford. But with the introduction but, of yeah, Nord now. And, and just just imagine a lot of people now wear new clothes mm. in Nigeria. But we have a lot of people making clothes. Mm. This wasn't the case in this the past. This wasn't the case in the past. Those are okay. times, you know, so when Nigerians make their own things, when Nigerians buy their own things, mm -hmm. very soon we'll be living normal lives. Because it wasn't normal. That At time, some point, we'll yeah. Out, we'll be using used clothes. Nah, no matter. Ah, use somebody's clothes and you're happy. <laughs> you are very happy using somebody's shoe. Okay. Never, <laughs> like, so I, I believe that with time. With time, things will normalize. Will okay. Okay. Thank you very much, man. I think you're this welcome. is this is good. This is good.